Hey guys, Jared here, and in continuation of the Swift Basic series, we're going to be taking a look at switch cases. So yeah, we're going to learn how switch cases work, and we're also going to peek a little bit into enums. There's a lot of more uses to enums than just switch cases, but we are going to be going over how to use enums in a switch case. Now the main reason I'm going over switch cases today is because tomorrow we're going to be going over how to make a game like four picks, one word. So get pumped for that. But without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to be using a playground for this so I'm gonna say get started with the playground and let's go ahead and create it so that we can mess around with switch cases all right so after a restart of Xcode let's go ahead and get started all right so the first thing that we're gonna do is just delete this string right there that is not needed so the way switch cases work let's go ahead and just type this in real quick so we have a switch case so what it wants with a switch case is a value so this value right here is a value that you want to check for instance this can be an enum value or it could just be an integer or it could be a string it can be any of those so for instance let's go ahead and test an integer so I'm going to say var my score will be equal to, let's say, 5. And then for the switch case right here, then I would put in my score. This is the value that I'm going to be testing. Then inside of here, you have a case. So this case, like in the case that this score or this value that I put in there is equal to this certain object. So for instance, with the case here, you could say if the case that the score is equal to, say, 2, then we're going to run this code that's in here. So we can go ahead and say print hi. So in the case that the score right here is equal to this value that we put there, then we're going to print hi. Now the glorious thing about switch cases is you can have as many cases as possible. So we can go ahead and we're going to write case 2 colon and then we're going to run the stuff in here. So in the case that this is say 2, then we're going to go ahead and print out good something like that. So now let's go ahead and change our score to 2 and it's going to run that. Now another thing that you can do with cases is we can say case 2 or 6. So you just put that comma right there and you're able to test two variables or you can continue on and add as many variables as you want. So now if I'm to able to say var score is equal to 8, it's going to print out good or if it's equal to 9, it's going to print out good. You, you, you get the point. Now you might be asking yourself, why don't I just use an if statement to compare some of these values? Why don't I just say if the score is equal to 3 or if the score is equal to 2, 6, 8, or 9? Now the main reason for that is switch cases both programming wise and also in compiling wise, they're a lot more efficient. So for instance, instead of saying else if, else if, and all this or statements and all that, it looks really messy in terms of programming, but also compilers and all that, they actually take switch cases cases and they evaluate which one's the most important to focus on inside of those switch cases. Because switch cases, what they're able to do is pick out which of these cases is the most important and then it's optimized more towards that. For if statements, it's just not as efficient compiling wise. It doesn't figure out which one's the most important to work on at this moment. It runs through all of them. So yeah, that is why you would use a switch case instead of an if statement. So yeah, that's the main premise of the switch statement. One thing that I really like using switch statements for is in game I want there to be kind of a randomness to it. So I can say var score will be equal to some random number. And then if the random number is equal to one or two or three or four, then I can build and run my application to run a certain way. That is just one way that you can use it. Another thing that you can use it for, and this is something that a lot of game developers like using as well, is let's go ahead and create an enum. So I'm gonna go ahead and say my enum, this will be my direction that I'm moving in. Then I'm going to say open curly bracket, close curly bracket. So the way an enum works is there's a bunch of cases that you can go through. There's obviously more to an enum than what I'm explaining here, and we'll go over that another day. But right now, this is what we're going to be focusing on. So we can say enum direction, and then we're going to say case uh, left, case right. Uh, we'll leave it at that. So then we can go down here, and then I'm going to say var direction, I'm moving in will be equal to, and I'm going to set this equal to my direction dot, and then I'm going to say right. And then down here inside of our switch statement, I can go ahead and say my direction I'm moving in. So we're going to be switching for the direction I'm moving in, and right now this is equal to direction dot right. So we need to go down here to my cases, and instead of having numbers here, and we're going to go ahead and say direction dot left. So if the direction is equal to left, if the player is moving left, then we're going to do this stuff in here. And in the case that the direction dot right, 
then we're going to do this stuff in here. And as you can see, it's set to direction dot right. Now for game development especially, this direction left and direction right really helps out. So for instance, if I have direction left, I can go ahead, erase all the movements that are going on with my character, and then figure out what I need to do to make that person move left. And what's beautiful about cases is only one of these can be running at the same time. So when you click on a button, you want to go ahead, run the switch case, and then you're going to say dot left, Dot right. Okay, it's moving left, so I'm going to move this way. Oh, never mind, it's moving right, so I'm going to cancel all the left movements and move right. So yeah, that's just one way that I see switch cases working really nicely. Again, I've used this a lot in quiz games and a bunch of other things, so try to look into how you would use a switch case to better your environment, to optimize your coding a little bit more, to make your code a little bit cleaner and a little bit more efficient. So yeah, that pretty much concludes it for switch statements. Again, you can put what Whatever variable you want in here. So if I have direction I'm moving in is equal to say a string, like I'm going to say hello. And then I can go down here to my cases and instead of that I can have it, oh if the direction I'm moving in is equal to hello then we're going to do this stuff in here or in the case that it's equal to high, then we're gonna do this stuff in here. Obviously, I just set it to hello, so it's gonna run this stuff. So just find ways that you can use switch cases, play around with them, and see how they can better your environment. Now, one last thing I wanted to get into with switch cases is break. With this, there's not too much explaining to go with this, so I have switch, case, and then break. So this goes inside of your case statement right here. So what the break statement does, it just skips the rest of this stuff, and it just moves on to the next line of code right after the switch statement closes. So yeah, that's pretty much what the break statement does. You don't really need them inside of Swift, but if you wanna optimize your code to the best of your ability, that would be something I would recommend doing because it makes your code, again, a little bit more efficient. And pretty much with programming, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make your game as smooth, as seamless, as efficient as possible. Because you want a great user experience. And switch cases, break statements, all that stuff, this is just one way to better optimize your game. So yeah, I'm not too sure when my camera cut out there, I ran out of space, but Either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. Uh, let me know what else you guys want me to explore in terms of Swift basics. I really love going over all this stuff, and I'm glad it helps you guys. Anyway, have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next one.